Hello. Welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep dot com. My name is Jason Newland. And this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. And as you can hear, my big black squeaky chair is very active this evening. So there. Um. Only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. Or did I already say that? I forget. Um, Goo goo goo. Before I go any further, I would like to thank Susan and Linda for your donations. Uh, It's very, very generous and kind of you, and I really appreciate it. I have contacted both of these generous people personally as well, but I thought I'd do a a public shout out and a public um, acknowledgement and uh, thank you, you know, really, that's that's what this is, and Basically, I posted a message on Facebook and Twitter just to say that, uh, you know, it's coming to the time in a month because at the beginning of every month, I have uh, a lot of expenses regarding the actual providing this free service. Uh, a Spreaker, the podcast host, um, the WordPress websites, because I've got four websites on WordPress, so I have, you know, it costs me money. That's with GoDaddy. And I've also got my main website, jasonnewland.com, which is hosted by Shopify. Plus, I got the internet that I need to pay for, which, if I didn't have the free service, I wasn't uh, working on the websites. I kind of wouldn't really need the internet because it's the only thing I pretty much use the internet for. Uh, so yeah. So, I'd just like to thank again Susan and Linda, and uh, just let you know if anybody else would like to help to support this free service, then you can go to paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. Paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland, and the link is on the website. Uh, right, that's all the that stuff out of the way. You know, it's really strange that when I go a few days without making any recordings, and then I make a then I make one like tonight, it feels like ages ago that I made a recording. It feels a it's really weird because it's only been maybe four days but it seems like weeks ago and maybe that's because I normally well quite regularly I'll make one every day so I kind of get used to doing it you know get used to the routine but 
not sure what happened. Oh yeah, Saturday night. There was a lot of. Uh, I'm not actually really sure what to call it, but there was quite a lot of sound uh, locally outside. So I kind of had a bit partying or whatever was going on. So I didn't really feel comfortable to make a recording with that. You know, with people shouting and stuff in the background. So I didn't do one. And then Sunday I didn't do one. Monday I didn't do one. Last night, which is Tuesday, well actually the night before last, because it's now Thursday, isn't it? Uh, anyway, Tuesday night, I had an early night, and then I went to London on Wednesday, which is yesterday, and now it's Thursday, and uh, I'm still up, you know, I I got up quite early today, or yesterday rather. Went up to London to visit my friend, who will soon be moving away. So, that was nice. It was, because I used to live in London. I used to, I was actually born in London. I was born in North London when I was a baby. That's the best time to be born with, isn't it? Otherwise, can you imagine being born as an adult? You'd never forgive your kid, would you? You'd never be like, how could you forgive that? So, uh, I was... I was a baby when I was born. And also, when I was born, I had uh, two brothers. They were both older than me. I was born in a town called Enfield. And so I lived there for two years. So I was with my parents for about three to six months, I'm not sure. Something like that. And then I went and lived with foster parents for until the age of two. And then I moved, got taken to other places, parts of the country. And then I went back to London, East London, in, what, the age of, I was like 19, 18 or 19, something like that. And then I moved away again after about six months, then I moved back again. And it stayed there, and I did, yeah, stayed there from 1991, January, until, I'm guessing the dates, but roughly, I think, September 2001-ish, yeah, and then, uh, Yes, yeah, so it's kind of. I've been visiting London because when I left, I still had uh, some family, still had friends, you know, people that I knew and associates and former work colleagues, you know, that kind of stuff. And then as time goes by, I kind of lost contact with people and you know back then there wasn't any Facebook or those kinds of things because it was the early 2000s by the time Facebook popped up I had lost contact with a lot of people and they had moved on and were doing other things I still visited and still helped out in the the club, helped my friend out when he needed my help. 
in the office or in the club or whatever um, you know even during my university days and even after that yeah so I kind of helped out when I could And then, you know, it's it's got to the point where I kind of only know a couple of people now in London. Notice how I slur the word London. London, London. I actually had a beer today. So my friend, I went and visited him. And I went and... Um, I don't think the beer could be why I'm slurring. It was only one little bottle of beer. It was lovely though. And I don't drink alcohol anymore. So uh, you could say, but Jason just said you did. And what I mean by I don't is it's not because I can't. There's no like problem now. It's just I just stopped drinking alcohol. Just didn't didn't really do anything for me anymore. Um. You said when I first moved into this flat, I was drinking most nights, and it was quite good. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna lie, it was all right. But I was getting drunk. I'd had maybe four cans, maybe six, but you know it wasn't. I never never really got drunk. Just like tipsy. And tipsy just means you keep falling over, doesn't it? Is that what tipsy means? And then I got Andre. I'm not saying that Andre's a reason I stopped drinking, because he's not. I don't know, I just... I don't even... I'm not sure why I stopped. But yeah, I just stopped. And I haven't had a alcoholic drink for probably last year. I had I had some vodka with my friend, and that was just he bought. I don't think it was a bottle. I think it was like half a bottle, and we just had half each with some Coke, Coca Cola, that is. And I didn't get drunk, which is weird because. Spirits. I've never really been, never really done spirits. I have. So I don't know why I said that, but I've not been a, like a spirit person. Like my dad loves scotch and whiskey and stuff like that. I, I can't really do that. I can't do scotch. I think that'd be the thing that he'd, he'd like most in his life, or not in his life, but. For me to sort of drink a, some scotch with him, he'd probably like that. But I can't, I can't, I can't, just don't like it. But I do like, what's the one called? The American, it's whiskey, but it's not really whiskey. Jack Daniels, that's it. I like Jack Daniels, which is weird because for me it has it doesn't taste anything like whiskey, and that's the thing with whiskey is the the taste that I don't like. Um, Jack Daniels was all right, so I went through a little phase where I used to drink Jack Daniels and Coke buy a bottle or whatever and it was quite nice but and I haven't done that for a long time but I remember last year I started buying these cans and I saw it in the off license it was a can of actually it wasn't it was my friend had one I thought ooh 
so when I was in the off license I would thought ah I'll have a look I'll have a look you know I just want to have a little peek like I don't think it's going to change my life but I'll have a look at I'll have a look at it anyway so I looked in the fridge of this off license basically if you go into the off license it's it's just like not a happy shopper but it's it's a chain of uh, it's like a post office off license they sell bread and biscuits and you know kind of newspapers yeah news agents as well it's kind of a bit of everything and scratch cards but I don't buy scratch cards anymore I used to remember once right I wonder if it's just appeared I wonder if he's going to come and give me a cuddle oh, I had someone meant off I can't think yeah, it was on Twitter today because I go on Twitter every day just to check just to see and um, because I post everything I do onto Twitter but I don't need to go onto Twitter to post it I post it directly from the Spreaker you know the podcast when I make it share it on Facebook on all three pages like my normal Facebook page my uh, what is it just my Jason Newland hypnotist page I've got about 33,000 likes on that page or something. And then I've got a specific Let Me Boy You To Sleep page on Facebook, which you can check out. Um, again, on the letmeboyyoutosleep.com website, there's a link to the Facebook page. And you can join uh, a bunch of other people. And every new recording... I upload, you know, I post on there so you can, it's just another way of getting, of seeing what I've done and the latest and all that stuff. And it gives you an opportunity if you so wish to do so, um, you know, leave a comment or say hello or, you know, say, let me know how you're getting on with these recordings. Um, but yeah, I went onto Twitter today. Uh, and well, it might have been yesterday, it was probably late evening, possibly nine or ten. But I still class it as today because I've not been to sleep yet. Does that make sense? It's, I know it's a different day because it's now, what time is it? One twenty-three in the morning on Thursday. But for me, it's still Wednesday because I haven't gone to bed yet but you may think well what if I was to stay up for 48 hours which means would be into Friday would it still be Wednesday to me and I don't know because I'm not going to stay up 48 hours because I generally find getting to sleep quite easy. It's, you know, especially when I've made these recordings, it tires me out. I get so sleepy when I make them. Um, and especially when it's late. So this is, this is quite early for me. But if, this, if it was like five o'clock in the morning... I'll be, uh, I'll be really, sometimes I will actually be falling asleep, just like, especially when I do the deep sleep whisper hypnosis ones, because it's a lot slower, it's a lot more um, focused, but not focused, if that makes any sense it's more um, it's much slower pace not that 
this is a fast pace, obviously, because I don't think that that would really work. I think if I was talking really fast, you know, I don't think that would be conducive to a relaxing state of mind. Not for me, at least. But then, that's the thing, because with hypnosis, if you see a hypnotist on stage, or if you hear them, even like in a movie, or uh, like even a caricature, you know, in a comedy sketch, or uh, there's a show called Little Britain, a comedy show, which is very famous in England. Um, I think it was quite quite popular in America as well. But there's a like a caricature of a um, a stage hypnotist, and he'd say, "Oh, look, look into my eyes, not around my eyes," and it it was funny. It's really good. Um, possibly sent hypnosis back by about 30 years but it's <laughs> it is funny but there's that idea that hypnotists it's like stage hypnotists they speak very quickly but part of that is about not boring the audience because, you know, imagine me doing stage hypnosis. It would be the audience who were hypnotised. The people on the stage would be asleep. And there'd be no show. there would just be me standing on the stage. Listening to a bunch of people snoring. Because I'm so slow. I'm, everything I do is really slow. And... Not everything, but, you know, a lot of things I like to, it's not so much that I like to do things right, I just like to take my time and doing things, you know, so, say for an example, I'm at work. I used to work and you know my boss would say that wasn't done right and I'd say I know it was done wrong but I took my time making sure it was done wrong the right way and then my boss would say what does that even mean I said I don't know that's why I did it wrong. If I knew what it meant, I'd have done it right. And then it'd say you have to you have to redo the foundations for this building before it collapses. I was like, okay, okay. So it was kind of I do wonder. I like the idea idea of doing of touring you know like doing a a stage show not so much a stage show but a kind of like a meet and greet Q and A Hello goodbye I, that kind of I just want to get paid. <laughs> I just want to get no. I think it'd be nice to do something on stage where people would want to see me, would want to meet me, perhaps meet the person behind the voice. Possibly, I don't know. 
The thing is, I know that there's an audience. But I think if I went to each country of the world that listens to me, which is most of the countries that probably, well, a big a big amount of countries listen, you know, people in different countries listen, I could probably, yeah, I could probably fill a small room in each, maybe a kitchen or a bathroom in each country. So I could probably get maybe five or ten people <laughs> in each country. Um, so it'd be like a world tour of bathrooms. And if it was in the bathroom, I wouldn't need a microphone because of the the echo, you know. You know what I mean? Or is that resonance? Echo? Tenants? Timber? I don't know. So yeah, I could... The thing is, though... To cover the costs of travelling to each country, and to have an audience of ten people per country, you know, with the airfare, hotel costs, uh, advertising costs, plus earn, earning a living, I suppose as well. I uh, probably need to charge about thousand pound per person and I don't see that happening anytime soon can you imagine paying a thousand pound to sit in a public toilet just to meet me yeah you'd, you'd want more for your money wouldn't you uh, that doesn't even mm, move away from that. So I could like the idea of travelling and meeting people because I've met some people online on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, on YouTube, uh, people that have left comments on my websites over the years and it would be nice to meet people in person you know to have maybe an audience of a couple of hundred people and then just go on and I can ask questions and maybe do a bit bit of hypnosis with individual people get them on stage and do a few little demonstrations um, have a laugh you know and just play around really yeah I quite like the idea of that you know, nothing serious you know just nice light hearted And a grand each, that's 200 grand a pop, that's not bad is it? 200 grand a country. I'll tell you something, I travel to a country each day, I try and get to a different country. If I was getting paid 200,000 pound a day, I'd make sure that tour lasted for a long time. I'd still be doing it at 93. Oh, I have amassed a hundred million dollars just by talking about rubbish and talking nothing. Talking nothing about nothing for years. Can you imagine if I'm still doing this when I'm 80 or 89, 93? And I suppose my voice will sound different then. 
I think I'll still sound younger than I am because I don't I don't think uh, I've ever sounded my age or sounded younger than I am but my voice has got deeper you should have heard me when I was three proper high pitched seriously we had a dog and the dog couldn't handle my voice like he used to yell every time I spoke he used to run away so you know my voice has changed but I always had a young voice I was like younger than what I am because I can't believe I'm going to be 49 in August so those of you that want to buy me birthday presents and stuff like that you know feel free I mean really I don't I don't you know I'm not trying to say it's a good idea but I think if that's what you need to do to show your appreciation for all the I would like to say hard work but clearly I don't put a lot of effort into this it's just me talking rubbish but I do it quite regularly I actually do put quite a lot of hard work into the podcasts not hard work but lots of effort a lot of of work goes on behind the scenes but I've I've talked about that before and I don't want to that bores me even more than it will bore you but it's so repetitive it's like it's like going to the toilet like doing a wee it's like why have I got to go so often can't I just do one long one in the morning and one long one at night and just have the rest of the day free to pursue other options in life other opportunities unencumbered by you know the little one needing my attention it's not that I always need to go to the toilet. I'm, you know, I've got nothing going on there. But see what happens if there's anyone younger listening to this, and as time goes by, everybody will be younger because I will be like the oldest person on the planet at some point doing this. Welcome to let me bore you to sleep. That'll be me. And I'll be saying, I know, I sound a lot younger than I am. I'm actually 400 years old. And I think it would be really... I think that would be good. I don't want to kind of... It's not like I want to kind of, you know, wish my life away and become older than... I'm ready, you know, quicker than I need to, but... I just wonder, you know, you ever wonder, like, well, what's it going to be like? Will I still be doing this? Because I've got a thousand recordings made since 2006. But I'm now recording more sessions than at any other time during my career as a... Uh, you know, offering this free ser- free service. I know technically it's not a career, but for me it is. This is my life. This is the only thing that I that I care about, apart from Andre. This and Andre. And technically you and Andre, because I'm doing this, I suppose indirectly I care about you. Even people I've never met, because that's why I'm doing it but you know Andre is my he's my number one obviously because he's my son he wasn't happy with me today 
because I was out all day. I come back. How did it make too much of a mess? But I know that he gets up to stuff when I'm not here because he moves things around. So, not sure what he's done. You know, I have to kind of check stuff to make sure he hasn't done anything too naughty. And I know that he heard me come in, but he didn't bother to get up. He just stayed asleep behind the behind the door. He just stayed there, completely ignored me. I came up with my friend, my friend's dog. Normally he'd be all over my friend. He's known him since he was a baby. Not not since my friend was a baby, but since he was a baby. And he's known the dog, you know, for the last year and a half or whatever. He didn't bother, wasn't interested, completely blanked us. I'm not sure why I'm mentioning that, but that's what happened. And now he's he's still ignoring me a little bit. I think he just he came I did have a cuddle earlier. He did come and give me a cuddle. But he's not giving me much attention. And usually he does. Usually he's jumping all over me, wanting me to take him out for a walk. And he hasn't bothered at all tonight. And I've been home since... I don't know, just before nine o'clock. So yeah, he's... he's don't know what's going on with him. Last night, I was in bed. I went to bed early because I was decided to go to London. And oh, you know, with the with my condition, I you know, I don't always manage to get out of the house. Don't for weeks on end sometimes I don't I don't kind of socialise don't make the effort or I make plans and cancel them and you know that kind of stuff but because my friend's about to move away and I'm not sure when I'm going to see him again and because he's been had such an important impact on my life um, I mean, by that, I don't mean he didn't give me chlamydia or anything. He's, you know, he's a good friend and he's just helped me a lot over the years. And, um, he, you know, so I wanted to visit him. But I just, you know, I've been meaning to visit for ages. And last night, it was like early, maybe late afternoon, I made the decision, I called him up and I said, I'm going to come and visit you tomorrow. And then I kind of, um, I had to do it. Sort of in my mind, I'd made the decision and I was going to stick to it no matter what. And I went to bed about 8.30 in the evening. I was hungry as well because I didn't have any food in the cupboard. So I was just like, oh, because I didn't get, didn't get any money till today. So I was like, oh, my, my old tummy was grumbling. I was like, oh, I was feeling sorry for myself. But I thought, I just got to fucking stay asleep till 10 o'clock the next day or whatever time I wake up. But I set my alarm for 10. Then I'll get up and... I'll get something to eat at the train station. But what happened is I woke up at half past one. And if you're bearing in mind, I've been asleep pretty much all day. You know, during the, the day, during that day before. So I didn't really need to go to sleep. 
but I woke up half one. I got up, watched telly, did a bit of internet stuff. I thought about making a a session, but I just wasn't really, my brain wasn't really very active enough to do anything. It was just like, ugh, a bit groggy. It was like, oh, I've got to, I need to go to sleep. I need to go back to sleep. But, you know, I wasn't tired because of being, I've been asleep. I've, you know, I spent so much time asleep previous because I've been staying up all night for probably nearly a year, if not not longer, and then sleeping during the day, which has been a choice. That's how I like to... Because at night it's quiet and I can make recordings. During the day, it ain't so quiet. It's as simple as that. At two o'clock in the morning, there's not much happening. Four or five o'clock in the morning, there's still not much happening, but there might be the birds singing outside, which I think is beautiful. It's, I think it's one of the most beautiful sounds. Uh, it's just a personal thing for me. I like that. Also, I like hearing pensioners fart when they don't realise they're doing it. Now, really elderly people, that makes me laugh. I think it's brilliant. Remember my nan did that one day. She just got up from the chair. I think she went to make it. Uh, she put the kettle on and she sat down talking to me and then she got up to, because the kettle had boiled. He let off the biggest fart. Didn't even notice it. And it's like, I was trying not to laugh. I did laugh, but I was quiet. I laughed quietly. It was brilliant. You know, but she's my nan, so I wasn't going to say anything like, oh, great fart, nan. Good on you. Here's a card that I had specially prepared for this occasion. You know, it's, it's, it's an award. So no, it was, you know, but it was brilliant. Because I always know when I fired. Like, if it's a loud fart, I always know. Apart from the fact that I can feel it. But I can, you know, I can hear it. And it's like, wow. I'm always listening out for a fart, wherever I am. I always, don't know why. Something about fart sounds that I just enjoy. I just love it when people. I don't know if the thing is they might actually hear it and just pretend that it hasn't happened, but they can't get away with that with me. You know, I've I've learnt to feel vibrations. So if my hearing ever goes, I'm still going to be able to detect farts. Even you know, ones that are not obvious with other senses. I'll be able to just uh, detect the small vibration of air <laughs> and then I'll be able to giggle to myself like a small child that I am sometimes see part of my brain's grown up but the far part of my brain is still very young the, the far part the far part of my brain is very immature but the caring part of my brain is quite mature so it's, you know, it's just it's give and take I suppose 
And I suppose, you know, some people who get offended, I can't believe you're talking about farts. I've come here so I can get some sleep. You're talking about farts all the time. Well, I don't talk about them all the time, but I do try and uh, fit in a regular dose if I can. It's, uh, I like to inject a little bit of farty ness into these recordings because I think it's a good test of character. When, you know, all said and done, and this life that we live, this world that we live in, if someone's able to be offended by a fart, or even talking about a fart, then that's something that needs to be addressed. You need to let it go. And that might be the reason why someone struggles to sleep if they're not able to let the simplest thing like a fart go. Because it is about letting stuff go. It's about relaxing. It's about letting go of some of those limiting beliefs. You know, those beliefs that other people should agree with us. I remember someone once sent me a card and on it it said, it was just one piece of card, I think it might have had a picture, a picture of a goose or something, I don't know. And uh, it said, you have two choices in life. You can be right or you can be happy. But you can't be both. So, you can't be right all the time, because you'll never be happy if you need to be right all the time. I think that was the point. I wonder why he sent it to me. So what I did, and I said to him, I think you're wrong. <laughs> he said, what do you mean? I said, I'm joking. He said, oh, okay. He said, I don't get it. I said, no, you're talking about me being right or, you know, right or happy. I was saying you're wrong. I've chosen to be right. He said, no, I still don't get it. I can't, I said, don't you understand what I'm saying? He said, yeah, but it's just not funny. And I got so angry. No, I didn't. I don't really get angry. I think part of the reason why I didn't... When I was very young... I didn't want to get angry. Ever since I watched the first episode of The Hulk... On telly... I just thought, oh... So that's what happens when you get angry. And I was worried that people wouldn't, wouldn't like me when I got angry. And I have to tell people, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. And I thought, that's a mouthful, isn't it? And people will think I'm just copying the Hulk. Because it was quite a popular television show back then. When I was but a child. Another thing I used to worry about is one of my favourite things was spinning round and getting dizzy and then falling onto the floor. And then I watched Wonder Woman for the first time. I was like, oh no. I'm going to turn into a, a voluptuous lady wearing blue and spangled coloured corset it. 
that's not totally true. It wasn't that I was worried that that would happen. I was more worried that it wouldn't happen. I tried and tried. Nothing. It's ridiculous. It's really, really bad. You know when you really... You, you put all your... Put your hope in like something like that. I should have tested it out first. Before I picked a fight with the rugby team. I said, come on, that's not off. That's not a real football. That's shaped like in a squash deck. That's a squash deck, that is. And I said, come on then. And they all like started running towards me. And I just twirled round. Thinking that I was going to become super human. Well, Wonder Woman basically. But nothing happened. There was one similarity though. There was definitely stars. I saw stars. I did. <laughs> so that was good. Actually, I was always too fast. I used to be able to run quite fast. There was a time when I used to run. And I used to run low. So my head was low. But my knees would go too high. And I used to knee myself in the face while I was running. It's true. And to this day, I don't know why. Why did my knees go so high? I don't think I'm ever going to know. I used to run through the high street. And I used to zig in and out of people. Jump over prams, all kinds. Seriously, just... And my reflex was so good. I rarely landed on the baby. Hot, rarely ever did I, you know, land onto a pram. It didn't happen very often. Um, and when it did, I managed to keep running. And it was just like it's amazing. It's just like everything became in slow motion, and I was zigging in and out of people and. I jump through people's legs and run up walls. It was really great. Sometimes I'd fly. It was it was very it's powerful stuff. Uh, if it was real, no, I used to run really fast. I did, but then I was brought up on a council estate in Newcastle. It's a very rough council estate with lots of gangs and rough kids and stuff and I didn't have to run fast because of me but my brother, my older brother was he had a mouth on him. So what he'd do is he'd shout insults out at groups of kids and then he'd be gone. He'd <laughs> it's like he would disappear. And it'd just be me on my own. And I think sometimes it looked like it was me that, that had shouted it out. And I once tried to say, look, look at the height difference. I'm like three foot two or whatever. My brother's a lot taller than me. Where you were standing back there, you know, maybe a hundred hundred foot away or whatever if it was me that had said it you'd have heard it differently it would have sounded different because of the echo because of my the volume of my voice but also because of my voice is higher higher pitched but they didn't seem to care didn't seem to be interested in that so what I did is while they were discussing uh, whether or not it was a valid reason I just ran through their legs and just ran off they couldn't catch me and I'd get home and my brother would say well so they caught you then did they I said no he said, well, why have you got two black eyes? 
I said, oh, knees in it. I kneed myself again in the face while I was running. And they laughed. I didn't think it was funny. I did that swimming as well. Remember I used to swim underwater because I always found it easier. And when I was a kid, I don't know if you remember Dallas. Dallas is a TV show that was a documentary or something that used to be on. And Bobby Ewing was one of the main characters in this documentary and J.R. Ewing was the star the outright star of the show and Bobby Ewing was his brother now before Bobby Ewing um, moved to Dallas and became uh, an oil uh, millionaire with his brother and I don't know why his brother never knew this never mentioned it during Dallas but he was uh, he used to live underwater and the, another documentary called The Man from Atlantis and he used to have webbed hands and webbed feet so he was very special and he could breathe underwater I mean he had he lived in a swim big swimming pool and it had like chairs and a table television um, I'm not sure if it had an aquarium I don't think it did but uh, there was no electric fire or anything like that so I don't know how he kept warm but uh, and that's how he lived and then he would come out and he could breathe for a certain amount of time and then start flipping around and have to get into some water and he'd have to take a little bottle of water around with him just in case we could pour it over his head so he didn't turn into a fish and he'd uh He used to swim underwater and his whole body would like move backwards and up and down, up and down. So I that's what I did. It's kinda of like a big flip. It was a big like a big flipper. His ball if you think of a flipper that someone would wear on their foot, uh, you know, someone that was diving. And they have, you know, the big blue. But no, they used to be black or blue. But I think you probably get them in different colours. But I don't think that's really that important. Possibly yellow ones now. Um, but it's like his whole body was like a flipper. It's, it's so bendy. And so he was. He used to swim underwater. And what I did is. I thought that was the right way to swim. So I used to swim, I could swim a whole length, possibly two lengths underwater. The thing is, when you're underwater, especially if you've got your eyes closed, because the chlorine and vinegar, or whatever else is in the water, I kind of kept banging my head on the side which was a bit annoying but it's so freeing to not have to try and be above the water being under the water just felt more natural now I like the idea of kind of mixing the two so instead of being a man from Atlantis I like the idea of uh, Wonder Woman where she could turn and she'd become like the deep sea diving version of Wonder Woman 
what I couldn't figure out is when she used to turn around how did she what was different because I used to watch it you know regularly in fact it's one of those shows that grew on me as I got older I don't can't really understand why but I saw it again when I was in my 20s it was on Sky television and it was it was about 1994 and I was in living in Ireland with my friend and Wonder Woman was on and I just saw it through new eyes and I really enjoyed it but from a different perspective because a lot of TV shows i found is, I loved them when I was a kid, but then as I got older, you know, it just, I don't know, things like The Exorcist, Chainsaw Massacre, things like that, they were great when, when I was a little kid, but as I got older, once I was an adult, I was like, oh, just, it's just silly, but Wonder Woman actually was better when I was an adult and I noticed new things that I hadn't noticed before and then I watched it again probably a couple of years ago and it was on um, ITV three I think and I noticed stuff again that I hadn't noticed at the end of every single episode as far as I'm aware she did a big smile to the camera like a big um, like her eyes always kind of glistened anyway not glistened as in not like glaucoma kind of like but just like shiny like eyes are quite shiny but she always had a big smile like big a big smile it was really a bit looked really genuine beautiful big it wasn't like fake she was smiling with her eyes as well which is weird because eyes don't have teeth but you know it's a saying isn't it smiled with her eyes and I'd never noticed that before never noticed not that she had teeth or that she had you know a face or anything but just I did notice that idiosyncrasy that little thing that was in every episode and I thought that's you know really nice that's a really nice thing to do it's because no matter how because it's a very realistic show obviously I mean it's there's very little that was more realistic than Wonder Woman it was quite gritty and hard hitting and very very political and you know it was it dealt with the issues of the time which to be fair still holds now it's very you know so like the missing bull that was very very important when the bull went missing and uh, no one knew where it had gone and they didn't know was it Tom or was it uh, Bobby that, that took the bull um, you know that was a very very important thing and that episode it just for me what I got out of that was you, you shouldn't take bulls shouldn't steal bulls 
I'll always remember that. And I must admit, my whole life, I've never stolen a bull. I saw a bull once in a field. Didn't even have a twinge to want to go and steal it. So, it's very moralistic and it helped me get through life. And it definitely helped me get through some of my uh, yeah some periods so I'm going to go now thank you for listening see you next time bye